So Stable Diffusion came out, what, three weeks ago, two weeks ago? I don't even remember at this point. Um, and there's been so many develops, developments since then, it's like really hard to keep track of. Like, I could probably do a couple videos a day on all of the new sort of tools and other things I've seen. Um, and I probably should, but I don't have time for it. So um, I just want to highlight a couple like cool things that I'm that I'm seeing as things are progressing, or when I see stuff, I'll try to record a video on it. Um, so I want to talk about this project, which is a, a really interesting use of Stable Diffusion. So you might look at this image and be like, okay, cool, you just made that with Stable Diffusion. But actually, um, what I made was a single image, and then from there we are able to tile this image. So this is a a image that has been trained essentially to tile. Um, and I think that's really amazing. It's a really cool technique. Uh, I think this points to like some of the areas where these sort of tools could go is like this would be really helpful in generating wallpaper patterns or uh, 3D textures for games or for 3D models. Um, and all it took was a slight modification to the actual model, model training um, to actually be able to generate this. So um, really interesting, really cool, and a nice like sort of like slight different use of stable diffusion while also maintaining a lot of the stable diffusion tools. So if you're already familiar with the prompts and those sort of things, it works really well. So I'm going to show you how to use this in a tool called Replicate. Um, so the link is here. Um, I'll drop it in the video notes as well. Um, Replicate is very similar to um, like Hugging Faces uh, Spaces. Um, it's an online tool that allows you to interact with it directly. There is a way to run this, um, you know, via Colab or locally on your own machine if you have the right GPU. But I think something like this is actually a really nice tool because it doesn't require you to um, sign up for an account. It's basically, I think it is free. Um, I've yet to run into any hits where like you're not allowed to run it. It might run slow. We might get stuck in a queue, but it works. So um, it's pretty great. So I'm just going to quickly run through how this works. Uh, it works just like pretty much any other, um, you know, stable diffusion model, including the prompt engine. So if you're familiar with some of the changes you need to make or some of the tweaks you need to make to stable diffusion, you can do that here. So um, let's get started. So we'll go ahead and click run model, um, and then we'll um, come in here and add a prompt. So you know, again, this might be for um, well, let's try something different. Let's try something here that I mean, this could be pretty easy to do um, with a with a three D like noise generation tool. But I think it also would be interesting to sort of see what happens here. So let's try marble stone pattern uh, stone. Let's remove some of this. Uh, we'll we'll even four K um, and let's just give it a color. So let's say brown, red, and white. Or let's say brown, red, silver. So that's just to add a prompt. So you just add in a bunch of uh, sort of text prompts, and then you can set your size. I'd probably leave it at 512 by 512, just because um, anything larger than that, you you might start to get like sort of these duplicative sort of images. Um, and this tiles pretty easily. Uh, if you want to use an initialized image, don't know why that just happened. If you want to use an initialized image, you can. I'm just going to um, generate it from raw noise. So we'll take a look at that. Um, and then also there's an interesting way to do masking. So if you wanted, let's say you already had something that was sort of patterned um, and you wanted to in paint in it, you can do that as well. Um, I will leave the prompt strength and the number of outputs. Well, let's actually crank up the number of outputs to four. That gives us four images for every time we run it. Um, prompt strength, I think leaving it at 0.8, especially since I'm not doing an initialized image is probably good. Um, I think 50 is always a good starting point for inference steps. Um, too lower, too much lower from that, you might not get good resolution. But any higher than that, it just takes a long time. And we'll leave again scale at 7.5. Now here's where you might also want to like sort of try some things. I would generally start with a seated number. This way, if I like the pattern but I don't like the actual text prompt, I can go in and change it. Um, so there's some examples here below as well. So at this point, once we've added in all of our information, we can go ahead and hit submit. And I found the first time you run this on a brand new page, it's a little slow just because it's it getting started. Um, but the next time you run it, it's pretty fast. It takes, you know, five to ten seconds um, to generate. So see our images are being generated. And I also, because I asked for four, I think it might um, take a little, it may take a little bit more time because we're asking for four images at once. I honestly don't know how Replicate uh, works in terms of backend. Like, I don't know if it is always assigning you a certain GPU, or if they're kind of working like Colab, where they're just grabbing whatever is available. Because when I ran this before, I did run it with just one image. Um, it was a little bit faster, but I think maybe because I set it to four, it's a little bit slower this time. But there we go. So there is our output. 
So interesting, you'll kind of see some different patterns here, right? So the first one is almost sort of that classic marble noise. Um, but then I get some other ones that are more like stone-like. So, you know, this is more stone masonry. Um, this one is kind of really interesting. I like how this worked. I have no idea how this kind of happened. Um, and then this one's also kind of interesting. So again, these are like, get pretty varied results here. Um, and again, maybe if you wanted to have more control over what the image is, you want it to be in a specific pattern, you might want to, um, you know, go on some 3D like site and grab a like black and white mask pattern and then feed that in as the initialized image. Um, but overall, I find this really, really cool. Um, and if you go ahead and download, it will download your images for you. I wonder if it's downloading all four. How does this work? Interesting. Let's say it only downloaded the last one. Well, that's that's fixable, right? You can probably just click on that and it opens. Yep. So, again, really quick tool, um, but it does and it does tile. Like every time I've tried this, it tiles almost perfectly. So, um, a really interesting tool, and I think it's a fun little like sort of tweak on sort of stable diffusion that allows you to do something different. Um, and in my opinion, it's also like this is actually something that's really hard to do. If you were to generate an image, there's like libraries that can do this, but they kind of don't always work as well. Doing this in some like Illustrator is a real pain in the ass. So having a machine learning model that allows you to use this is really cool. And I think it's a nice tweak and sort of points to maybe the future of some of these tools um, and doing really specific things really well. So hope you enjoy this short video on this. Um, if you make something cool, let me know. Um, and otherwise, I hope you enjoy playing with this. It's free. It's on Replicate. Um, and it's pretty easy to use. So with that, I'll see you next time. Thanks.